Hi guys, I wish I could be there with you, sitting around the tables and air conditioning and cold weather. Here it's uh, probably 90 degrees and with the wind chill maybe a feel of 113 degrees and I turned the fans down so there wouldn't be any noise. Church music was a big influence when I was a child and I heard a, a choir. This is back when church music had choirs and um, uh, there was a, a cantata about um, this guy that died and yet the song was happy and I started asking my mom questions right there in the service why is everybody happy about this guy dying and she shushed me up but I kept on with my questions for several days and I eventually got somebody to lead me to the Lord and that's how I came to know the gospel. Speeding up again ahead to uh, when I was 12 years old the missionary pilot, a bush pilot, came and told me these beautiful romantic stories about how scripture memory helped him survive under a canoe in the rain waiting for a ride to get out of the jungle. And he also impressed on us the, the, the idea that there are thousands of languages that had no writing in them and certainly no Bibles. And I thought, boy, if I could ever learn another language, I hadn't even studied English yet, that I should try to translate the Bible. You should at least try one of those things. Anybody, if you're a Christian, you should at least try one of these translations. So you should be able to knock it out in no time. Well, I, I didn't do well in languages. I, I didn't do well in French or German or Spanish. And um, in Bible school, there, the, the missions came around again. I studied just about everything but missions. And they said that I should get at least one master's degree in linguistics before I think to go overseas. And so I studied other things. Um, then one day, I was, uh, it was after college, after Bible school, I was driving in my Mustang GT, and I was a collection agent, and I had $17,000 in the trunk. And I saw a Cadillac at the side of the road, and a very tall, very old man pulling luggage out of it. And I, I stopped to see what was going on. He was trying to change a flat tire. So I helped him change his flat tire, and. In the course of the conversation, I found out that uh, he and a bunch of other elderly folk were going to a Wycliffe banquet, Wycliffe Associates banquet, and it was about missions and supporting missionaries. And I said, "Well, I know, I know a missionary with Wycliffe, and um, she's a, a single gal. It was, it was Sue Goddard, um, your your second missionary that you ever sent anywhere from Bethany." And um, at the end, he tried to give me twenty bucks and. I said, it's okay, I'm, I'm doing okay. And he says, well, give the $20 to your missionary friend. I said, okay, I'll do that. Um, that evening or a couple evenings later, I got a phone call from Wycliffe asking me if I was still interested in missions and that when I was 12, I had filled out a card saying that I thought that I'd be willing to do that. And I said, yes, I'm still interested, but I'm still nowhere further in being able to be a translator and know any languages and so on. And... Um, so all these events sort of led up to when Sue called me on her first furlough and uh, one thing led to, the, to another and we went back, she had already done a term, we went back and here we are. And we're now 82% through with the New Testament in Konyagi. And so that's, um, that's how I got saved, that's the missionary call and uh, fears. You know, I don't think I fit into the fear thing because I have very little impact awareness. I'm not aware of what I do or what I say so much. I have to work at that. And I've always trusted God and God has always provided. Um, there was uh, about four years back that uh, we could have had some financial fears toward the end of uh, any translation. Your uh, um, Satan seems to hit the hardest for translation teams to discourage them or to derail them from the work. and. Um, it was no surprise when this happened and Sue started complaining to God that if he could just get us one supporter for a thousand dollars a month that we would um, that uh, we would be able to pay off all these extra bills and get out of debt and that that would that would solve that problem immediately after she started this complaint she was reminded of the scripture that talks about um, God owning the cattle on a thousand hills and then it occurred to her also by God's prodding that um, he reminded her for the last several months we had had 
one-time gifts for $1,000 from a different person every month. And it, it was as if God was saying, can you trust me to be that supporter and to provide for you from a different source every month as long as I see fit for you? And, uh, that was uh, so more than my wife ever talks about money, ever. So, <laughs> um, but God has always provided. So, there you have it.